And let's start with what questions you have. Okay, well, let, let me let me kind of explain uh, my company and then maybe you can tell me in which direction I should be going. Um, I'm a commercial roofer in New Jersey, strictly commercial. Um, I had done a few federal jobs uh, through an older company I was with and um, I just got my state classification. I have um, nine full-time employees, uh, one part-time. I did about two million last year and uh, the, the competition is extremely uh, it's extremely competitive on the public level here. There are sometimes 20 bidders. The last two uh, bids I went to, there were between 20 and 25 bidders. So Jeez. the federal the federal end of things looked appealing in that uh, I'm noticing probably the most expensive roofer in all of New Jersey is showing up as continuously getting federal contracts. So it, it, it interests me and it seems a little overwhelming and a little uh, clunky, the website. Okay. Um, how long have you been in business? Uh, as this uh, LLC a year and a half. Okay, so you did two million a year and a half. That's not bad. I mean, that that's gonna no, look and, um, that'll look great on a profit loss statement, you know. Yes, it's one of the reasons I got my state certification so quickly. Have you done any state, local government, uh, any other type of government work, even as a subcontractor? Uh, I did Fairleigh Dickinson University. Um, some, yes. Okay. One. And that's stuff that you can claim. You can put it on your, your documentation. Yes. Okay. You know, any experience you have, even as an employee for a company since you were in college, can count. Well, I was with one one entity for 32 years. So, and all of my employees were with that same employer as well. 32 years. God bless you, man. Yeah. <laughs> Must have been a good company. <laughs> This is the longest company I've ever worked for in my life. You know, a lot of times they just, I, anyway, I don't want to get off on a tangent like that. Yeah. Um, are you a veteran? No. Okay. No. Check to see if you're in a hub zone. No. And, and in watching your video, I, I kind of get it. Um, um, it looks like I'm just small business. I'm not a uh, minority and uh, I, I wouldn't qualify for anything else. I did, uh, I did get in the SAM registry last year, but you know, I, I don't know what to do with it. I, I'm in there, I'm floating around and I, I don't, I don't know how to take this to the next step, I guess. Only thing SAM's really good for is getting paid. Um, okay. For the most part, it's like having a fishing license, but you know, you still got to fish. You still got to use, get a boat and motor and all that other stuff. So um, have you ever done a DNA test? Have I ever done a DNA test? Yes. Yes. And so you know what nationality you are down to, down to the wire. I am. Uh, and none of those uh, English, Irish, Italian, and German, I don't think any of them qualify. Well, you and I are pretty close, except I got a few more in the, in the wood pile. Um, <laughs> so no, not even 1% Native American. You know, I'd have to go back and look again. Go back and look, because sometimes people have a small percentage. Uh, more than 1% for most tribes is enough. Really? Believe it or not, I can help you get a tribal card. If you can show you're more than 1% Native American, you have to do three things. You're going to have to uh, do the DNA test, because we need the evidence. Uh, track your family tree and see what area you think, who, who you think that came from, you know. Um, and then we would... Uh, you ever heard any stories about any relatives talking stories about maybe being Native American or anything like that? Oh, on my mom's side, it's it's all blurred. So I that's I, I'd have to go back and look at that uh, that right. whole break. Right. 
let's let's not uh, let's not waste any time on it for now. But double check when you can. If you find out you're more than one percent Native American, you're going to need to follow up with any of your friends, family, relatives, anybody who knows anybody connected with any stories that have ever been told about that. We okay. take those stories, your DNA, and your family tree. We contact the tribe that would have been in that area at that time and give them that data. And if you're more than 1%, I, I'm 99.9% .9 positive I can get you a tribal card, brother. And that changes the whole ball game because that puts you in place for an 8A. Yeah, and I've and that's why I'm calling you, is that my insurance agent it sells bonding for a lot of these tribes, and he's telling me it's – it's very lucrative dude um tribes get when a, when it's on some contracts when a tribe wins it they get an additional five percent on top of their bid automatically and when primes hire tribal companies the prime gets an additional five percent on top of their bid just for hiring good. a tribal company as a subcontractor so they're Crazy. always looking for tribal eight days but look you and I are in the same boat, all right? We're uh, just, just a couple of white guys. There's nothing wrong That's with it. that. That doesn't mean we can't win. I, I get that a lot, too. People say, well, I'm just a white guy. Dude, there's no way I, I can do this. Yeah, you can. I have guys brokering. I have people in business shouldn't even be in business. I I'm joke and say they have no business being in business. Um, <laughs> I had a kid watch that movie, uh, War Dogs. I almost forgot the name. Uh, said he watched it 50 times. Called me up, watched my videos. John Wayne, yo, dog. I want to be a war dog, yo. Uh, you know, kid dropped out of high school, no diploma, no car, no license. Had to walk to the library just to to use a computer to submit bids, but had a heart of a line. He did 100000 this year. To him, it's like doing millions. You know, he's a billionaire now in his mind. So when people like that can do it. Someone who's, you know, aggressive and established and intelligent like you, it's just a matter of time. You can also do... Uh, federal contracts in, under, in other states under your local state license. So you're not limited to just your state now. Okay. So I could go into Pennsylvania or Delaware and <clears throat> still and do business. In most cases, you could take on contracts in any state and you could sub the entire thing out if you wanted. Or you could sub That's half... You could show up and go to a temp agency and hire 100 guys on the spot that are there every morning at 5 o'clock ready to work and not even pay for hotel and motel, you know? Wow. That's, uh, that's amazing. So um, I, I kind of get the – on the federal level, and that's what I'm, I'm looking for, somebody to, to tell me how to – I guess uh, to pursue what to pursue and what not to pursue and that it, it's taken me a long time to find prospective jobs within these uh, search engines. And then uh, I'm not sure what's a waste of time. Uh, I know that for a small business set aside, it's, it's not about the price. It's, it's more how it's presented. Is that true? Small business set asides is it's that's a great way of explaining it. It's it's the most important factor is your technical proposal. And you'll see that in FBO when you click on an opportunity and look at it. Usually the first thing that says when it says small business set aside, it'll tell you the most important factor is your technical proposal, which is your solution to the problem. Second most important factor is your experience, your past performance, and you can use your subs past performance and your associates and partners, stuff like that. And and your previous employee uh employment. In, um, past performance experience uh, so that's second and then price is third price is always last on small business well it's 99.9% .9 of the time it's last and it'll say that right in the in the synopsis and and are they are these these entities looking for a technical proposal to be presented in a certain way like do you know the format that these guys say well I'm going to look at this one but this one clearly this this entity doesn't really know what it's doing or or have a good technical proposal correct because uh you know obviously doing a good job providing the right solution is the most important factor the easier you make it for these guys to do their job like you know less hassles if there's a problem bend over backwards to fix it communicate well do all the right things to make their job easy you you know as well as i do humans in general are lazy 
Um, yeah. we'll, we'll do the least amount of work that we have to. Even people like you and I that are driven, we're still somewhat lazy. We still take some breaks and what, you know, uh, we're 80% water. Water takes the least path to resistance. So, um, if the easier we make it for these guys to hire us and to continue to hire us, the more business we'll get. It snowballs. So you want to have your ducks in a row, submit everything properly, follow the instructions. That's the one excuse they have to throw anything out that's hardly provable that, that they can't say, you know, you didn't follow the instructions. Uh, mm -hmm. So when you do, the people that don't get thrown out. Now, if you look at this contract right here, there was only three offers received, right? Okay. Full and open competition. There was no set aside. So anyone could have bid on this. There was only three offers received. More than likely, they only needed three offers. Most contracts only require three to five offers. So why would they even consider five or even 10 offers? If they put something out and they get three offers that meet their, their criteria within a day, they can archive right. it in a day and just deal with those three offers. Who wants to deal with 50 offers? That's ludicrous. So if they get too many offers, the first thing they do is go through them and look for reasons to throw them out. The first thing they check is the math. I, I've seen it. I've worked with a couple of purchasing agents and actually on the inside, the first thing they do is they run the numbers. If your math doesn't add up, they can throw it out. They don't care if you're the cheapest or the best, right? It's not their job to care. It's not their money. Hmm. I, I had a client earlier, uh, he got contacted for a simple, well, it's right here. He got contacted for a simplified acquisition. He said, I could show people this. Um, Patrick Turner. So a simplified acquisition is where they don't put it out for bid. So this purchasing agent reached out to him after he submitted a bid on another project and said, you want to bid on this one too. So here's the opportunity. It's not on FBO. It doesn't exist on the internet. So it's a simplified acquisition because if it existed on anywhere, it would show up on the internet and it doesn't. When I found her email that he sent me, I noticed that it had his email and four other emails within the body. So there was five vendors that she sent it to, which tells me that she has to get five offers. You know, so she's going to find five people and send it out to them. They're not going to ask 10 people this because again, they're, they're doubling their work. Um, so I, he said, well, and I got a 20% chance of winning. I said, no, think about it this way. You got a 20% chance across the board. If everybody's compliant, does everything they're supposed to, and their proposal's perfect. Chances of that are, are not, they're, they're minimum. 10% right. chance they're not going to submit their bid right, or they're going to do their math wrong, or they're going to make a basic mistake and get thrown out. You know, 10% chance that purchasing agent doesn't even get their email because they don't send it properly. This is things that I teach my clients to make sure that they're 99.9% .9 of the time they're, they're on the money. The only reason why they should lose is because past performance. And when, when these three bids are presented, is it, is it different uh, as opposed to the state level where the, the people that didn't win the bid can go and look at the winner's numbers and make sure everything's, is it, is it at the purchase the only thing that your competitors can see when you win a contract is how much it was for and your DUNS number. That's it. Yep. Now they can take your DUNS number and they can come into a system like this. They can go to PPAR, SAPIS, um, USA Spending, FPDS, um, FedRet, no, not FedRet, CPIRS, PPARs, and FAPIS, USA Spending, and Federal Procurement Data System. You may or may not be posted in here. It may or not may or, or may not be your choice, but in the beginning, I'd have them posted if you can because it shows proof of past performance. So the only thing your competitors can see is uh, how much it was awarded for and that it was awarded to you. I see. And you're going to get the same information when you lose one. They're going to tell you how much. Now, you're also going to request a debriefing, which they don't have to do on some state contracts. They don't have to tell you why you lost. They don't care. It's the state. There are different rules. The feds have okay. to tell you. So you have a window where you can request a debriefing and ask them, why did you not choose me and why did you choose who you did? And they'll tell you in writing or they'll call you. Okay. Makes sense. Uh, I like these odds way better than in the uh, at the state level, where, like I said, it's a it's a it's a circus right now at this point. I, you'll hear me say it in my videos. I don't like state contracts because they're highly competitive. The last state contract I bid on, I found out there was fifty-two offers received. 
because they don't put a limit on the offer time. Right. They don't have a limit. The feds are trying to push small business, so they only need three offers to submit it, a small business set aside or five at the most. And as soon as they get it, they're going to take the. I've seen stuff put out in the morning and archived before the end of the day. And if you're using wow. FBO when that happens, FBO runs every morning at three o'clock. So if they posted something this morning and they archived it by four because they got six offers and they only need five, you won't even get the opportunity because your search runs at three in the morning. That's why we have our AFPDS. So it runs every five minutes. That'll never happen. So within this search engine that I'm looking uh, at here, like I've got in New Jersey, there are two extremely large VA hospitals. Uh, I want to say three military bases and a host of federal buildings. Are, are, is everything going to show up within this? Like, are they all in sync? Is the VA going to be posted here? And uh, a federal building in Newark, New Jersey also, or are they, is, is it all separate? This system I'm showing you right now, it tracks about 7% of the spending. So it's may or may not. Even if, they, okay. uh, even if they did post it, uh, sometimes it'll show up in USA Spending, but it won't show up here. Sometimes it'll show up here, but it won't show up in USA Spending. Yeah, that's what I'm asking. Is that how many different, how many different engines, search engines do what I have to be on to be able to confidently cover most of the things that are being out for bid? One know, that are being bid. one. We have a system that we've developed. It's we've we've spent millions on it, and it's done. It's finally out. It's in beta version, so you get it for free. Uh, it tracks all federal procurement. I should okay. well, not all. I mean, ninety nine point nine percent of federal procurement it tracks. There's some top secret stuff that no one's going to ever see, no matter what. You know, sure. uh, there's stuff like that that exists. So it, it'll never track all of it. But if if it exists uh, on a government forum or a public forum, it's in our database because our database searches automatically searches all these other systems every five minutes and uploads. It also That's tracks. Good. It also tracks subnet, so it gives you all the subcontracting opportunities that are available, which is a whole other system you'd have to use. It also uh, will eventually track state and local, but that's years down the road. That's that's a whole other ball game. Um, yeah. and, and eventually it'll track all the Fortune 50 companies and then the Fortune 100 companies. Fortune. Our goal is to eventually have one database where you go for all procurement. That would be nice. It's huge. And this database also builds your proposals for you. Eventually, it doesn't now, but it's in, like I said, beta version. Uh, it also gives you past performance automatically. So when you get an opportunity to bid on, it'll tell you who did it the last 33 years, how long they mm -hmm. held it, what they were paid. Uh, it'll give you every, any of the detail that exists that's out there. It'll give you that data automatically because <laughs> the biggest problem we found is that more people lose small business contracts because they underbid than overbid. And that's just nauseating. They underbid. More people lose federal contracts on the on the simplified acquisition and on the small business set asides. More businesses lose because their quote is too low versus the other. Huh. Now, if it's, if it's a Fed bid or a Fed Connect, if it's something that goes through there, those are reverse auctions. So those are always the cheapest. Those aren't small business set asides most of the time either. Hmm. But if it's in the uh, not Fed bid or Fed Connect, or if it's a simplified acquisition, it's based on price. And and I you've I'm sure if you've watched enough of my videos, you've heard at least once or twice someone get in the training and say, "Hey, purchasing agent told me my bid was too low. What should I do?" Yeah. Increase your bid, you knucklehead. <laughs> I'm not sure by any stretch, and I never have been. So I'm not that I'm not shy of that. So, so you have this. You you would have this search engine, and uh, I guess would you offer your services to write the proposal or oversee the a, a, a proposal? There's, there's three things that we do here, and you've got two options on that. I I can write proposals. Right now, I've only written six, and my success ratio is 100%. I've won all six that I've, I've written. That's just for people here. I've writ, I wrote proposals when I own my own company, and uh, my success ratio over there was about 40%, 50%. It was for an event company. And um, 
it was tough, but I was doing a lot of state contracts too. And like you said, yeah. I, I finally got into the feds and started making money. And then the economy dumped in 2008 and people stopped spending on entertainment. Long story short. <laughs> yeah. So there's three services we provide. We do your registrations. I'll assign a case manager to you. They'll do, do all your paperwork from now on. All you got to worry about is submitting bids, making phone calls, getting in front of primes and, and purchasing agents. So SAM, uh, CCR, ORCA, FedReg, uh, DSBS, FBO, all those systems they'll do for you. All you got to do is fill out the worksheets in our APP and they do use that data to do all your, your registrations. They maintain, update. If you buy a company and merge it, they'll take care of all the merger paperwork. They do all that stuff. They'll update SAM and all that stuff, all right? Okay. That's one service we provide. Second service we provide is training. You get me daily, one in four. No matter what, you'll have access to me every day at one and four in our group training online, <clears throat> live through GoToMeeting. So if you got a bid you want to work on or a question, proposal, solicitation, anything, you can always reach me. And you'll also get some private time. So if you need me outside the group session, you'll have access to me. Hell, you're going to have my cell number. If you need me in an emergency, you got a bid due in the morning, call me. All right. Number three, I write proposals. If you want me to write one, I will. I'd rather teach you and, and help you do it and do it for you. But if you you know win a few and you see that this is the real deal and you want to go after the big one, the Mac Daddy, yes, you can pay me and I'll write it for you. Meanwhile, I'd rather teach you and help you and uh, assist you in doing it and help you win some to get started to, you know, to see that this is the real deal. Okay. So between one and four, you're, you're basically fielding questions and reviewing the process. Any of the videos that you've watched where you hear multiple people asking questions, that's my daily training that I do live and I record it. Now you can also, <clears throat> pretty much any government subject you search now, I'm, if I'm not number one, I'm number two or number three and I'm making my way to number one. But most out of the 300 videos I've got, I think 60 of them are number one. So if there's a subject you wanna learn about, search it, click on my video, you'll learn. Right. Um, if there's uh, something you want to learn about that, that I don't have a video on, I'll make one or I'll do private training with you and, and show you one on one. Um, if you search instructions to offer instructions to and the word offer, which is not a real word, the government made it up. It's O F F E R O R. No, um, I saw that. I thought it was a typo. No, no, that's the government made up a word. <laughs> If you search that, uh, there's only 200 and something videos online, 99% of them are mine. I'm the only person that puts out content on instructions to offer because that's what proposal writers charge you to do. They don't want you to learn this stuff. Yeah, that's interesting. So if I go into this this uh, search engine and I and just recently I found it, it's, uh, it's where they're basically exploring or throwing out there to see who is interested. I, I forget what that's called. Uh, um, so it's a SOT, uh, RFI, request for information. Do you, you know any of these guys over here? Um, Riley Construction, Sheila, Wu and Associates, Cherokee, 8A Group, that's a Native American owned, uh, HJ no. Cannon, Puente, Intercontinental, or Puente again. Any of those guys? No. Okay, I can tell you American Artisans and Science Applications International Corporation, these are both brokers. They're not doing any of the work. They're winning the bulk of the contracts. Uh, 123 out of 1,100, so he's 1%, 2% minimum. Uh, and these guys are all 1% or less. They're winning the so bulk these of the guys know how to, You know, I know Wu and Associates. I've, uh, I, I wrote or gave them a quote once. Okay. They've done, it says 228, but you got to remember when looking at the system, it tracks 7% of the spending. So if you round it up to 10 uh, and multiply it by 10, then they've probably done around 20, around 3,000 contracts for the government. Wow. And could, could you type in a D, D as in David, A as in Apple, NOLT, N-O-L-T. He's just a straight up roofer and he's the one that uh, piqued my interest because of the fact that um, right there. DA Nolt. Yeah, he's just a just a roofer and he's gotten a few um, 
decent contracts. He's not he's he's not cheap and he seems to be getting some work. Well, um he doesn't have any he's just another white guy too, so he doesn't have any set asides. No. Um Well, let's do this because, uh, again, tracks less than 10% of the spending. So if he's probably done about 250 contracts so far, but let's check USA spending. I'll show you how this one compares to another database where they track this. <clears throat> you know, I've never looked at my done. I I've haven't had my done's number very long. Is that telling me it it'll show completed projects? It, well, if you've done it for the feds and they posted it, it'll show up in here. But if not, no. Mm -hmm. Your Dun & Bradstreet yeah. number is, is basically worthless. Right now, the government's, mm -hmm. uh, from what I've heard, they're discussing not using Dun's numbers anymore. The problem is Dun & Bradstreet's owned by that 1% of the 1% that own the government. <laughs> <Yeah. laughs> as far as they haven't killed right. me yet. I tell them, I say my videos all the time, don't pay Dun & Bradstreet. And they either don't think I'm a threat or just haven't come after me yet. <laughs> <laughs> so yeah, so this guy. So he's only showing 22 in here, showing 24 here. Yeah. So he's what's piqued my interest because he's ridiculously expensive and he's he's getting work in here. Turtle Associates, Seawolf Construction, Ray Angelini, Inc., Joseph, Joseph Natoli. Yeah, I've done work for Natoli. Hmm. You did work for Natoli as a subcontractor? Yes. More than likely, it was probably a government job, a federal job, so that does count as federal past performance. Well, that's good. Well, there's two things I'm going to teach you because it's a it's a dog eat dog world. I tell my clients I'm going to teach you to be a lion. Um, I'm going to teach you how to get more sub work because sub work does count as past performance. It brings in money with the feds. You're pretty, practically guaranteed to get paid. It's not like state or local or or doing uh, private work and they say I'm not going to pay you and you got to take them to small claims court. Uh, with the government, you're you're somewhat protected, um, but it counts as past performance and. The second thing I'm going to teach you is how to go in and find your the guys that you're working for, who they're working for, and find that purchasing agent's name and number so you can take that from them as well. Well, that's good. Any of those jobs you've done in the past as a sub, I'm going to show you how to search and see who the purchasing agent was that hired the prime that hired you because that purchasing agent probably knows that you did the job as the sub. A lot of times they have to disclose it. And there's nothing wrong with you reaching back out to them and saying, hey, uh, I did this for you five years ago as a sub. What do you have as a prime now? I'm a prime now. What can I bet on? Right. So with your service, uh, like you've got different levels. I mean, what, what, how would I... Do I sign up for a, a different, like you have different tiers or? I really only have one level of service and that's, it's, I mean, they allow this basic training thing, uh, but you're not going to get any private time, blah, blah, blah. I have a, a training package where you get five hours of personal time. Uh, any of the videos that you've watched for every hour of video, you get 10 minutes of free private time. So, you know, all that stuff adds up, but we've got one, let me pull it up for you and I'll show you. Okay. Um, that's what I figured. <laughs> no, that's not it. <laughs> 